I really respected Keith's East Coast roots and the history and the culture that he brought with him when he moved out west. He didn't change, he didn't feel the need to change. And we were a Northern California company, man, and we were just, you know, we were in the pocket of it, and holy shit. If we bring Keith in, it makes it that much fucking ratter, a full melting pot. This is when Embarcadero is like fucking hot as ever, you know, it's like 100 people there skating every day. You know, I didn't know anyone. There's definitely pro skaters there. You gotta kind of like ease into the situation. So I remember just being shy about it and, you know, not like charging in there and trying to be some dude or anything like that. Yeah. <laughs> And he skated good. I think that always served people well coming to Embarcadero, that, that combination. Quiet dude who skates good and is not trying to be friends with everybody. It's like the perfect assimilating blend. Skateboarding was progressing so fast and, and, and there was like this technical side of skateboarding that was going on in Embarcadero. But I think the way that he skated and what he brought to that table was respected by all those different kind of groups where if someone would just skate down there and they couldn't do a bunch of tricks, they're a T-Dog or something, you know, like an older dude or something, but Huff, the way that he skated, could transcend, and I thought that made him different than all those other guys. He's always been a pretty powerful skater, like a really good push. His ollie skills are intense, like, you know, I've seen him like ollie over the front of cars with just little bumps and stuff. And the guy's incredible pop, you know? Yeah, the first time I seen Huff skate, I think me and a little crew, Dandra Hobel and Matt Pales, we skated up to brown marble. Huff just ollied up the block, tray flipped to the next block. And we were just like, holy shit. Never seen anything like that before. Just effortless and beautiful Huff style. It was all about just pushing and ollieing over everything, like the way you do in New York. He definitely took that style over there. Because SF was like, SF is pretty much a mini New York, but it just has the hills, so it makes it a bit harder. But he utilized it, just blew the SF kids away, like, with style. He kind of looked like a raver at first for a little bit, and then all of a sudden he got this really cool kind of helmet style, beetle style haircut. He was just a rock star from then on, and... <laughs> oh man, I don't know why he did the helmet head, but... He did the helmet for some reason and ran with it for a while. I think close to a couple years there with the helmet going off. And he got a bunch of tricks on that with that hairdo. I did the uh, the big bleach blonde hair. <laughs> we were just into bleaching our hair always. I didn't want to go spend money to get a haircut, so I was just cutting it myself pretty much, just like cutting my bangs off so I could skate. And it just became this humongous fucking helmet head. And it was like a weird thing for a minute. <laughs> He was always like a really hard worker and him flying around and getting on stuff that's way higher than anybody else is getting on and lends itself to better photos. His first real ad, the hill went down, flattened out, and then there's a wheelchair ramp and then the hill went down again and he was flying off of it. It's so high for that bump. Basically every day Gabe would just pick us up and we'd just go skate. So it was like we were getting coverage every single day. He was like super photogenic, like that kickflip at Black Rock and all these cool things around the city, you know. He's such a like city skater, like he grew up in a city. So when he came to San Francisco, he can skate everything. Every trick that we were doing or someone was doing, he was doing two feet higher. The lip slide at uh, Brown Marble Benches from the FTC video. Just ollieing up that was gnarly. Beyond fun, FTC video was like my actual first part. Basically it was a shot video, you know, and it was Mazes, it was Mazes doing. That was definitely like when you're, when you're star, when you're getting coverage and people are seeing who you are and they're like, they actually start accepting you more. It would kind of just naturally come together like, all right, I'm supposed to make an FEC video and these are the guys. I can always rely on Scott and Mike Carroll. Mike is like the FTC figure at the time, so he'll, I know he'll come through for it. And Scott's like one of my best friends. I skate with him all the time, so by default, he'll have enough stuff. And then by the time the second video came around, Keith was kind of in the mix with me so much that I knew like, all right, he's got a lot of stuff. And pretty quickly, I figured out he can have a part, you know? You no, know, we would just go skate with Mazes. So I was really, you know, at that point, I was all into bombing hills in SF and just alling big shit. And that was my thing at that time. When it came time to like edit, or getting close to editing the, the video, he's like, I got a song I want to use. I want to use some reggae. And I was just like, ah, oh, dude, like. I had to fight for that song too, because I used the uh, Uptown Top Ranking. 
and I just remember Mesa was not into it at all. I just remember being like, it has to be this song. The song is half, the, half your video part, you know. It really sets the tone. And then he just gave me the tape and I was like, oh, this is awesome. I think it's like Althea and Donna. It's like the best song in the video, probably. What? I think it's like one of the best songs in the skate video. But in, in, the, in the lyrics of the song, they talk about pop and style, and that's like Keith had pop and style, so like I, people probably like put it together. But I doubt he was like picking it for that reason. Denali heel flip cab at Union Square was pretty damn sick over the bench. I feel like you guys both did, did burial flips. I mean, did he Kinda. Really? I think I turned him on to it. Because <laughs> like a lot of people don't do that trick or weren't doing it. Yeah. Before. I think it was like a, a late 80s trick and either you did them well or you didn't do them at all. And I think some people were just scared to do them because they didn't want to be known as the burial flip dude. Back then, Huff was always wanting to skate. He was a skate rat. And coming from the East Coast, they, those guys didn't have all those chances to skate every single day because of the snow and the rain. So for him to be out here in, in San Francisco, he just wanted to skate. So he was kind of easy. You know, you could put him on the road and put him with the crew, and he was the one that just was like, yeah, let's do this. They'd get us together a lot. So, you know, it was like Kelly Bird, Sean Mandoli, Edward DeVera, Jim and Tommy, Solomon. You know, and then Gons came apart and, you know, we were all super stoked that Gons was part of the team. And I remember just, you know, he would just come on the tours and, or we'd go to LA and just, it's like, hey, we're going to LA, we're just going to go skate with Gons. You down? I'm like, fuck yeah. Like, he would want to skate anything weird and different. The first tours I actually did with Huff was when I ended up working for DC, and then we were doing DC tours together. I was on DC shoes for five years. It was Colin and Danny and Deerdick. Then they put on like their next kind of like up and coming team, which was like me and Scott and Kane Gale and Carl Shipman, Moses Akonin. It was, you know, there was a whole crew of us, and we were like the beginning of DC to some degree. With shoes in the past, it was just like, Vans or whoever's just sponsoring, like many people just giving them two to four pairs of shoes a month, not really doing anything with them. So DC was gonna approach it differently and try to build like a, a team. I don't know, I think we were all pro, but we were like the AMs of DC. And there was like the superhero guys, with like Rick, Mike, Rudy, you know, Deerdick and Colin, Danny, of course. We were on the beginning DC Super Tours. It was get the whole entire team, go to Europe and do big time demos. It was a Big Brother tour with a four on one video. So we definitely partied, we definitely went nuts, we definitely did crazy shit, and we did amazing demos. It was something different because demos were just like 12 guys were all of the van, two guys skate, and like this felt like way more professional in the regard of like, hey, we're gonna go and put on a show here, present it as like more than just like some dudes dicking around at the skate park and, and hanging out, smoking weed in the parking lot. It was actually really good. You know, they made jerseys for us. Every person had a jersey name. And I remember the first demo, they were like calling everyone's name and people were roaring. And I was like, what the fuck? For the first demo, we showed up and it was like a place where like no one could come in. So we were all warmed up. And then they opened the doors and let everyone come in. So when people came in, like dudes were like, firing, kickflip, kickflip over the hip. It was like a 30 to 45 minute demo and it was like done, like it was explosive. You know, maybe like had a gumball 3000 type of feel to it too, you know what I mean? Where like you were just going from city to city and it was like skate all day, travel and like go to like a crazy party and then like do it all over again. And there was a lot of like sparkle around it. Like honestly, that was the best tour I was ever on. I was like, you know, you're taken care of, you're staying in nice places, you're skating amazing stuff and the reaction was amazing. I mean, really, at the end of the day, like, the, the fallout from D.C. was that those guys were killing it. It, I don't, it wasn't a big secret to the riders. I mean, it comes down to he wanted a shoe, and I don't think they were intending to give, like, another shoe to any of us. Hang on! And Keith was, he wanted it, and Tim saw that opportunity, and he, he got a hold of him. DVS was like, hey, we can come over here, we can do a pro shoe. And Keenan was there too, so I was like attracted to that. And you know, I talked to DC and I was, you know, kind of just weighed out my options and they weren't really gonna do anything for me at that time. So I went over to uh, DVS. Hey, 